Most of the weapons in Fallout 3 are designed to do direct damage to an enemy. A baseball bat, for example, slams against someone's face and shatters it. But there's a weapon that requires more patience than almost anything else in the game. Can you beat Fallout 3 with only frag mines? Frag mines, like all other explosive weapons, get their potency from the explosive skill, which is determined by your perception, but also luck, which affects the starting level of all skills. Those two are pretty much all that matter. Endurance is good to have, so you can take some damage. Intelligence helps medicine and getting more skill points when leveling up. And agility is useful for sneaking. At some point, between my first and ninth birthday, I somehow managed to escape Vault 101 and make my way to Vault 69. The vault that's 999 women and one man. The usual birthday stuff happened, though the number of women with mustaches was a bit off-putting. Down in the basement, I encounter the first and biggest problem of this run, the rad roach. There are only two ways to proceed beyond this point. The roach dies, or we clip through the wall and play the game as a child, which, as I became far too familiar with in my Fallout 3 without attacking anything run, presents a set of its own horrible problems. I spent a while brainstorming ideas to deal with this situation. The only requirement is that the roach dies. The quest says to kill it with a BB gun, but in my fist-only run, I punched it to death, which means that Bethesda lied to me again. In a previous video, I discovered that mole rats in Smith Casey's garage can die if they run into objects a certain way. It's the same reason the flying objects in my baby playthrough did damage to various creatures. I reloaded a prior save to pick up every conceivable object I could, which weren't all that many, and went back down to the basement. I had a few party hats, a child's jumpsuit, a magazine, two coffee cups, a drinking glass, two forks, and four white plates. And then there's the BBs themselves. Drop all 50 at once and you get a single object. But drop them one at a time and each BB counts as its own object. Though they're not actually BBs, they're these little tray things that hold BBs. You get 50 when you get the BB gun. If, for some reason, you manage to miss all 50 shots, Dad can give you 30 more. You don't have to waste them though. Just drop the initial 50 on the ground, tell Dad you need more, enter up to 80 BBs. This process can be repeated as many times as you'd like. Because I'm a psychopath and I hate myself, I kept going until I had 1,000 BBs. There's a roughly 6% chance to miss the roach when you use vats to attack it with your fists, which is how you get over the barrier. Then there's the actual dropping part, which is just about the worst thing you could possibly imagine. Not only is death a preferable alternative to communism, it's also a preferable alternative to this. After several thousand years, I had dropped about 1,000 BBs on the ground. Unfortunately, but not exactly unsurprisingly, this didn't work. Like, not even a little bit. Then, because I was curious, I used console commands to speed up the game, just to see if the BBs flying around would kill it. Not only did they not kill the roach, they blinked out of existence like Benjamin Button. What this means is that there was no convenient way to get past the roach which is why I used my executive privilege to make an executive decision. As several people have pointed out over the last few months, any can you beat Fallout 3 or New Vegas with only this one bad weapon video is essentially pointless, because if you can beat the game without attacking anything in the first place, of course you can beat it with one particular weapon. As I'm sure many of you have figured out, these are less about whether or not it can be done, and more about how difficult it is. Failing a challenge has never stopped me from finishing a playthrough of a game. Bioshock Infinite is the most recent example of that. The answer to the video title's question is yes, you obviously can. You'd need to escape the vault as a baby, and then only use frag mines from there. I'm not doing that. The roach will die, but not from a frag mine. If my decision bothers you, feel free to dislike the video, unsubscribe if you were ever subscribed in the first place, leave a mean comment, or whatever else you feel like doing. Now that the longest 10 year old birthday party of all time is over, I picked explosives, sneak, and medicine as my tag skills. Amada woke me up. I told bitch I'd save his mother and then left her to die, ignored all the vault security and rad roaches, escaped the vault and was off to Megaton to sell what I could to crater side supply and pick up as many frag mines as they had. Because I said as many frag mines as they had, you might be thinking that they'd have more than none, but they didn't. Luckily, Moira is quite the eavesdropper and gave me a hint at where all the frag mines in the world could be found. Eat your heart out Disneyland, I'm off to the minefield. 
I avoided danger on the way out there because I had no means of defending myself. I picked up a few mines, used one to finally wipe Arkansas off the map, and went about my business, finding as many mines as I could. The Fallout Wiki says there are about 67 frag mines scattered throughout the minefield. I find that hard to believe because I only found about 30. Then again, I stopped looking after I found 30 because I figured that would be enough to last me a while. But let's not get bogged down by semantics. I returned to Megaton to give Moira a frag mine for her book, waited several weeks for her to restock her supply, got no additional frag mines from that waste of time, then broke into Colin Moriarty's saloon, his cabinet, and his computer to find out where my dad had gone. Having the rather explosive personality that I do, I obviously let Mr. Burke persuade me into blowing up Megaton. Then I let Lucas Sims know because one, I thought it'd be funny, and two, there was nothing he could do about it. With 30 frag mines lodged deeply in various holes, I set sail for Galaxy News Radio. I used more than 3% of my total frag mines to blow up a dog. After entering Farragut West Station, I noticed that things were exceptionally dark. I assumed it was nothing, pressed onward, discovered that the ghouls lacked skin in a different way than they usually did, and the game crashed. The crash was a good thing though, it let me know that it was a game error and not the sentient void trying to lure me back into the eternal darkness. Upon reloading the game, the void seems to have released its stranglehold on this particular subway station, which means I can finally progress deeper into the station, blow up a ghoul with a mine, and emerge at Chevy Chase where I damaged two super mutants, then let the cat chat fan club do the heavy lifting while still giving me the experience. I tried it again with the behemoth outside Galaxy News Radio, but it was less effective. Not only did I not waste two dozen mines on it, but I found five more in the monster's corpse. I failed the speech check with 3Dog because I'm about as charismatic as the least charismatic person you can think of, and was off to the partially destroyed phallic structure. I used one of my frag mines on some losers in the collapsed tunnel car, but the loss of a mine wasn't worth the 6-12 experience I'd gotten in return. I used a few mines at DuPont Circle because there were quite a few scattered around the circle. I also broke my fingers in one of the explosions. You might be thinking, because of the way I talked about frag mines at the beginning of the video, that I'd use them as intended, as traps that I'd place on the ground to lure enemies into. I didn't do that. I found it to be much more effective to run up to someone, toss the mine into their hands, and run away as it blows their face into jelly. By the time everyone in DuPont Circle was dead, I had more frag mines than I started with. The road to the Washington Monument was blocked, so I decided to go back to Super Duper Mart, waste the squatters hoarding the barrels for themselves, and travel to Rivet City to save myself some time down the line. I stuck a special mine in Grandma Sparkle's special pocket, raided her shack, and the curse of Grandma Sparkle rendered me smitten once again. As recompense for her stinking up the capital wasteland with her evil blood magic, I left her body to decompose in the irradiated water of the river. Then I channeled my inner Instagram whore and layered a bunch of mines on her table for a photo op. I killed a few raiders under a bridge, discovered the citadel, discovered the Jefferson Memorial, and then arrived at Rivet City. Shrapnel of Frack and Shrapnel had a whopping three frag mines available for sale. I waited several days to see if his stock would update. It didn't. I accepted a hush job from a visitor from the Commonwealth, got some intel from Madison Lee, got a job from Abraham Washington, checked with Shrapnel one last time, and headed out into the wasteland to clear out the super mutants from the Jefferson Memorial. I've upgraded my explosive skill since I last encountered super mutants, which allows me to kill all but the brutes with a single frag mine. There was a centaur in the rotunda, which was something I don't remember encountering before. Once the building was cleared, I was down to a sickening 13 frag mines. I returned to Megaton, where I was amazed to find that the mayor had forgiven me, or the radiation from the bomb had eaten away at his memories and he didn't remember shooting at me in the first place. Moira only had a single frag mine. I sold all my other weapons to buy a set of combat armor, waited a few more days, bought one more mine, and fast traveled to Vault 101 to begin my journey to the west. I got a slow-mo shot of my patented frag mine throwing technique, was down to 12 frag mines, avoided most everything on the way to Tenpenny Tower, bought a few more frag mines from Lucky Harith, killed two Brotherhood outcasts with a single mine which shocked even me, watched some guy think himself to death, and sent Roy Phillips to hell where he and his kind belong. Fistonia finally has a friend. I went up to the top of the tower to meet Burke and Mr. Tenpenny, where I had the distinct honor of blowing up Megaton. I got my payment, leveled up, bought a frag mine from Chief Technology Officer Mr. Gustavo Zorolo, 
made a beeline for Smith Casey's garage, entered the garage, put on the jumpsuit, activated the failsafe, ignored Braun because I didn't want to get those hands, talked to Dad, and agreed, for the millionth time, to meet him back at Rivet City. Shrapnel was momentarily overcome by the void, which I took as a sign that I should go outside and try to explode a kid. Unfortunately, I once again forgot to install the Annihilate Children mod, I reloaded a save, because of course I did, ignored the main quest line, and was off to the Museum of Frida. Preston, get the fuck out of my head. I'm off to the Museum of Technology. Before I even left Rivet City, I made a neato discovery. The frag mines themselves can do damage, not the explosion, the mine itself landing on someone. Couple that with the increased damage from a sneak attack, and you can kill Carlos with two frag mines while avoiding any explosions. Nifty discovery, if I do say so myself. Several meters outside of Rivet City, I got ambushed by the regulators, who were tougher than I would have liked. It was worth it when a mine exploded with such force to send an assault rifle all the way over to Carlos's corpse. I avoided most of the super mutants in No Man's Land in front of the Washington Monument, because the eight or so mutants there, and the fact that several were brutes, convinced me that I probably couldn't kill them all even if I wanted to. Up in the tower, I forgot that I had to actually find the goddamn dish before I could install it, so that quest is a lost cause. I returned to Rivet City, bought a few more mines, spoke to Dad, got a refresher from Zipper about what I was supposed to do, left a surprise frag mine for Gary to set off as soon as he wakes up, and left to meet up with the scientists at Jefferson Memorial. I had to put all logic aside and clear out a few of the mutants outside before they'd go inside, and I could help spruce up the place by pressing a button and installing a few fuses. I knew what was coming up, which is why I left one of my mines inside the purifier for Colonel Autumn to set off. The Enclave arrived. My frag mines were now powerful enough to kill an Enclave soldier with a single, close-ranged blast. I cleared out the few soldiers in the gift shop and entered the rotunda. So, a uh, couple things happened here. The first is that my mine either didn't go off or it did and nothing happened. The second, and much worse, thing that happened was that I decided it would be brilliant to glitch myself into the purifier. I used the quick save quick load method to clip through the purifier walls without much issue. Dad keeled over, but was polite enough to finish our conversation before getting back up to his feet and then dying. I didn't see him die because I was suffering from radiation poisoning and didn't think for a second that my pit boy would cease to exist once I glitched myself inside. Just a shitty situation all around. I reloaded a save to when I first got inside the purifier, snagged Pumpkin Spice's jacket because there was no way I was leaving without it, backed up to where the radiation wasn't so bad, and spent 5 minutes spamming quick save and quick load until I was free and could wait for Manus and Lee to take her sweet time walking to the escape tunnel. She convinced me to give her five stim packs to give to Garza, who got bonked in the head real hard by a barrel and fucking died. The amazing part was that, for once, someone dying a stupid death was not my fault. I got what remained of Madison and her snooty attitude to the Citadel, figured out which vault had a geck, and spent ten minutes checking the quartermaster's inventory, then waiting, then checking it again. By the time I left, I was up to ten frag mines. I then bought a few more from Chief Gustavo in Tenpenny Tower, and went back to Rivet City to continue the Replicated Man quest. Remember that mine I left for Gary? Yeah, it exploded shortly after I spoke to Dr. Preston about a robot. Gary must have had friends, because nobody was happy about his death. Well, nobody but me. I escaped via the river, found Pinkerton in the broken portion of Rivet City, and could finish the quest. After the residents of Rivet City had their 76 seconds to grieve, I returned with no bloodshed, informed Zipper that Harkness was the android he was after, and left knowing that I'd done a good. I fast traveled to Smith Casey's garage and began heading for Little Lamplight. Next to a radio tower, some rapscallion approached me about some ants burning shit up. My guess was that the ants had finally gotten to Brian Wilkes, and successfully burned and ate him alive while he was screaming for his long since dead mommy and daddy to help him. With 14 frag mines to my name, I entered Little Lamplight, and hell descended upon us all. I didn't want to go help the slave kids, and I didn't want to do more wall glitching. So, my only way of getting into Lamplight is a speech check that I have about a 4% chance of passing. Math tells us that a 4% pass rate means that I could theoretically pass it after 25 attempts. It took far more than that. I spent nearly 15 minutes trying to get this little cunt to let me in. This was agony, pure and simple. 
As I explained, back all those years ago when I was cleaning out the Jefferson Memorial, my frag mines are at a point where they can kill a normal super mutant with one blast. But a not insignificant portion of the mutants in and on the way to Vault 87 are tougher than average. I ignored most of them, because frag mines aren't the easiest thing to stock up on. I did waste one group of rad roaches as payback for what happened at the beginning of the game. Fox was released from his cage, but I didn't rely on him to get the gek. I just let him follow me and kill some of the mutants to keep them off my back. I retrieved the gek, Fox died, I laid down a frag mine that did jack shit, and was captured by the Enclave. Autumn was not only alive, but he had somehow gotten his body wrapped around the interior of a new jacket. I leveled up, picked here and now as my perk, and because explosives has long since been at 100, I put the points into sneak and medicine, and picked demolition expert as my perk. Now, see, there's an unexpected problem with frag mines that comes from your explosive skill being at 100. It increases the detonation timer as the skill gets higher, which is useful when collecting rogue mines, but is a pain in the ass when in combat because you drop a mine at an enemy's feet, but because your skill increases the detonation timer, it takes forever for it to go off. The other problem is one I faced several times over the last 11 months. Taking damage of any sort can stagger you, preventing you from attacking back, regardless of whether it's a melee attack, a firearm, or a pocketable IED. The small upside is that it kinda looks like the mine is glued to my hand. I got the drop on two Enclave soldiers courtesy of a stealth boy, spoke to the president, stuffed the vial deep inside somewhere safe for transport, let the machines fight the men who were pretending to be machines, escaped Raven Rock, and fast traveled back to the Citadel to tell the teacher that Austin punched me in the face at recess. That was the plan anyway. I had to stop at Rivet City first, to make sure I had enough mines, to make sure that his dog is just as dead as mine. The expected over a long explanation from the Brotherhood windbags took place, and I exited the Citadel with my seven lucky frag mines to take the fight to the Enclave. I fast traveled back to Willem's Wharf, because for some reason I thought it'd provide me with a faster route to the Jefferson Memorial. After I made the wonderful discovery that Grandma Sparkle's corpse no longer takes up space in this dimension, I followed Liberty Prime until we arrived at the memorial. I ignored the Enclave soldiers on the way to the rotunda, and after the game crashed, things actually went my way for once. Sarah Lyons followed me inside, I blew up the imposter colonel and his goons, and the end was in sight. I inserted the vial of virus, dropped all my mines outside the door to ensure Sarah's demise. The door sealed, and my trap didn't work. But I found that mine I dropped earlier, so I wouldn't die completely alone. I legitimately forgot what the code was for a second, entered it correctly, succumbed to radiation poisoning, and did not beat Fallout 3 with only frag mines. And that's gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout 3 with only frag mines. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through the link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.